You might think that there's nothing wrong with the fake version of a thing. For example, who cares if fake bananas exist? But hold up, if you eat one, you might choke. Fakes can be dangerous. These are 20 frauds that could cost you your life. Number 20. Recutting Car Tires Car tires are expensive. Not everyone can afford to buy new ones once they go bald. After all, some tires can cost several hundred dollars to replace. So you might think about recutting your current tires, which involves carving out new tread marks so that the tires look brand new. Believe it or not, this is common practice in many countries, and previously bald tires are repackaged and sold as brand new ones. It looks like a genius business model, but it can actually be fraudulent and downright dangerous. First of all, how annoyed would you be at spending money on what looks like a new set of tires only to find out it has previously been pushed to its limits on another vehicle. You'd be furious. And then there's the safety element of it. There's a reason manufacturers don't perform this practice themselves, and it's because you're taking extra rubber out of a tire and leaving it far more exposed to blowouts and punctures. They're a set thickness for a reason, and now you're thinning them out by cutting into the rubber that previously added to the durability of the tire. I don't know, it all sounds a bit dodgy and fraudulent to me. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now, it's time for the odd topic. In this image, you can see someone laying a fake pothole onto the road. A weird thing to do, you might think, but there is a logic behind it. This is something that happens in Canada. The idea is to try and slow down traffic, but it doesn't always work out the way it was intended. Some drivers have been known to freak out when they see these fake potholes, lose control of their vehicles, and crash. Well, that backfired, eh? As always, let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below using the hashtag OddTopic. Number 19. Mail Fraud Mail fraud is pretty common in the United States, but if you're caught partaking, you might spend the rest of your life behind bars. Mail fraud describes a scheme to defraud and mailing a letter to execute the scheme. Many actions meet the criteria of mail fraud, such as mailing money or anything of value or communicating about a fraudulent deal. The person who sent any fraudulent mail and anyone who knowingly participated can be punished with fines and imprisonment for up to 20 years. Among the most common forms of mail fraud involve those targeting senior citizens, veterans, small businesses, and the unemployed. For example, a fraudster might send a letter about an inheritance, asking the victims to send money for taxes and fees before the inheritance can be released. Another common one is sweepstakes fraud, with a recipient asked to pay money to receive their free prize. Small businesses can also receive mail that looks like it's come from a government agency, asking them to pay a fee to keep their business license. Fraudsters are getting smarter, so everyday Americans need to be on their game. Number 18. Fake Modeling most people who need money simply get a job to earn it, but that's not the case for everyone. Some people will try to make fast cash by offering fake modeling jobs, which has been surprisingly effective. According to some UK statistics, up to 49 people lost almost £1,500 each in 2019 alone. This fraud involves a supposed photographer urging someone to book a slot for a test photo shoot, which comes with an upfront fee. This can be your first alarm bell, as many reputable agencies cover portfolio costs. Once you've paid the fee, you might never hear from the supposed agency or photographer again, and they just walk away with easy money. Alternatively, they book your photo shoot and take your advance fee, and then you actually go through with the photo shoot. After it's done, they might say that your shoot was successful and offer you a job. This can involve signing a contract and paying yet another upfront fee. After this fee is paid, you never hear from them again. Fraudsters don't just target people wanting to be models either, they also target parents. Fraudsters can create fake ads asking for children to work as models, with the promise of a potentially lucrative career in the future. Parents are encouraged to send a fee for a portfolio and sign up their children, only for them to never hear from the company again. Every year, dozens of people fall victim to this scam, losing thousands of dollars in the process. Number 17. Credit Card and Debit Card Fraud 
Credit card and debit card fraud are among the most common types of fraud in the United States. Rather than getting a job and working for their money, fraudsters will steal your card details and drain your bank accounts. And it's much easier for them to do than you might think. They might install skimmers on ATMs that take your card details so that they can replicate your card. Or they could even purchase your information from the dark web. In recent years, there have even been cases of familial fraud, which involves family members opening credit cards in their loved ones' names. Debit card fraud is slightly different. Fraudsters would have to lurk around at an ATM so that they could see someone's PIN number. Once they know it, their next action would be to get access to your physical card or obtain the information from it using skimming technology. If you've noticed that your wallet has gone missing, you have charges you don't recognize, or your credit rating has suddenly changed, you might be a victim of fraud and need to cancel your cards. Number 16. Wobbly Tire Scam there are plenty of good people in the world who would alert you to a problem with your car as you're driving down the road. But there are also a few awful people in this world who would alert you to a problem that doesn't exist, pretend to fix it, and then request money for their work. This scam is pretty common in the United States, and fraudsters are getting smart. Not only will they target people they don't think will pick up on the scam, but they'll also travel with women and children so that people they scam let their guard down. Some take it one step further than simply requesting cash. They'll get into the person's vehicle and request that they drive them to an ATM or bank or pay them in gift cards. Often, the only way to get rid of the fraudster is by giving them what they requested. One woman had two men perform such a scam on her, and they took $400 from her wallet and wouldn't get out of her car. Six people were also identified as wobbly wheel scammers in Houston, Texas, and four of them were caught and charged. Those six people alone were said to be responsible for scamming at least 50 people in Southwest Houston. Number 15. Mortgage and Loan Fraud Mortgage and loan fraud can turn people's lives upside down, and those responsible can spend significant amounts of time in jail if they're caught. Loan fraud involves using your identity to take out loans in your name with no intention of ever paying them back. Mortgage fraud is closely linked with loan fraud, but can be carried out in many different ways. In all ways, though, the goal of a fraudster is to take money that doesn't belong to them. They might prey on vulnerable people on the brink of losing their homes and promise to clear their debts to prevent foreclosure. Once money changes hands, they disappear. Otherwise, they might commit deed fraud and steal an equity in your home, or even pressure you into a complicated reverse mortgage scam that drains your home's equity. Sometimes, fraudsters trick people into becoming straw buyers enabling them to secure a loan using your good credit. Mortgage and loan frauds can be life-changing for all the wrong reasons, so great care should be taken only to use trusted lenders. If you notice that someone has attempted to change your home title or you've had new loans or credit inquiries added to your credit report, you might be at risk of such fraud. Number 14. Fake Medicines most of us know to always read the labels on medication and take them as directed. We also know to use medication prescribed to us or recommended by a chemist if it's an over-the-counter medication. But even when taking these precautions, there's still a risk that you're taking counterfeit or fake medication that does more harm than good. Many drugs can be classed as counterfeit, including those that contain an inappropriate dose of an active ingredient or don't contain an active ingredient they're supposed to contain. They might also have additional components that aren't listed, have inaccuracies or false packaging or aren't absorbed by the body in the way that they should be. Essentially, any medication or pharmaceutical product that is sold to deceive the consumer regarding its efficacy, authenticity, or origin is counterfeit, and it could cost you your life. For example, 60 people died in Pakistan in 2012 after drinking cough syrup to get high. While the medicine had the ingredients it was supposed to have, it also had something that wasn't supposed to be there. Levomethorphan. This chemical is five times more potent than morphine and is believed to have led to these people's deaths. The following year, 44 children in Paraguay ended up hospitalized with breathing difficulties. They had been given the same medication from the same batch that killed the people in Pakistan. Number 13. Advanced Fee Scams 
Some people with great deals of confidence find a job that suits their personality, like sales, although some people losing confidence and charisma will use their skills for evil and scam people in advance fee scams. These scams can be straightforward or complex, but the victim often loses a significant sum of money in the process. Sometimes they'll be promised a share of a large sum of money, but they have to pay a small upfront fee to obtain it. The fraudster will either fall off the face of the planet or come up with more fees that the victim needs to pay. An example of an advanced fee scam would be the Nigerian Prince one that makes the rounds typically by email. Sometimes a supposed business will also offer a service like lowering interest rates on debt or restructuring a loan, but you have to pay a fee for the service up front. Once you've paid the fee, you don't get what you were promised and your fee money is lost forever. As complex as the average advanced fee scam can be, there are plenty of ways to point them out. You might be at risk of being scammed if a business asks for a fee before they provide their service or they make unrealistic promises that most other companies wouldn't make, especially regarding debt forgiveness. They might also ask you to sign a non-disclosure agreement before work takes place. Number 12. Phone Hijacking our phones are like miniature computers and pretty much have our entire lives on them. As a result, they can be pretty desirable for hackers who want to access your financial information and even your identity. You might think it's impossible for someone to hack your phone since you have a pretty complicated password, but it is possible. In fact, they can even hack your phone through your Wi-Fi. Hackers can access your Android or iOS device by using DNS hijacking to infiltrate your Wi-Fi router. One of the most common ways is called Man in the Middle. Your device is connected connected to your Wi-Fi router and it relays a MAC address to identify your device. All devices on local networks have unique MAC addresses. The hacker will find your local Wi-Fi router, target the MAC address, and make their MAC address the same as yours. Now, all devices on the Wi-Fi network connect to the hacker's device, and they can relay data between your router and their device. But this is not the only method. They can also call your cell phone service provider and ask for a service transfer from an old phone to a new one. This can be easy enough to do if they have the last four numbers of your social security number. Otherwise, they might only need to give your address, birth date, and other easy-to-obtain information. Once your number has been transferred to a new device, they can reset all your passwords and prevent access. Number 11. Ticket Scams Missing out on tickets to your favorite band can be devastating. You might browse the internet looking for the last few that remain and, lo and behold, find some. But there's every reason to believe that the tickets you've just found on the internet to an event that was sold out aren't actually real. You're paying to receive nothing. Tickets can be offered for sale online to a concert or another event that's sold out or doesn't even seem to be on sale yet. As the website you're buying from looks legitimate, you might have no qualms about handing over your hard-earned money. But it's likely that the ticket ticket supplier is not legitimate. You might receive a ticket, but it doesn't work at the venue and the ticket collector tells you it's a fake. Otherwise, you buy the ticket, but it never arrives and you can't contact the person or company that you purchased it from. Sometimes you do receive a legitimate ticket, but it's of a lesser value than the one you bought. The best way to avoid these scams is by only buying from ticket selling sites authorized by the event. And if they sell out before you get a chance to buy one, well, better luck next time. Number 10. Fake Taxi Scam we are fast moving into a cashless society, and there are many benefits associated with doing so, like fewer germs, faster service, no counterfeit bills, and a reduced risk of robbery. So you might not think twice about helping a stranger with your debit card when their service provider won't accept their cash. But this might be a scam. In Toronto, residents were being sucked into a quite sophisticated fraud involving a fake taxi driver and a fake passenger. The passenger approaches an unsuspecting member of the public and tells them that their taxi driver won't accept cash due to the COVID-19 pandemic. They ask the citizen if they would mind using their debit card for the taxi fare and they'll be compensated with the same amount in cash. If they say yes, the resident hands the card to the taxi driver while the passenger distracts them. The terminal in the taxi has been altered to capture the card's information and a similar looking card is given back to the resident. Sometimes it's not until much later that they realize they no longer have their card, but the two scammers now have their card and all their information. According to York Regional Police, the scam had been happening a lot around shopping area parking lots and people were being told not to hand their credit or debit cards over to anyone for payment. Number 9. Ponzi Scheme Investment Fraud 
Ponzi schemes are a type of investment fraud that can make bad people extremely rich while you lose everything you worked so hard for. Financiers take your money and promise to invest it for higher returns and minimal risk. Instead, the fraudsters use your money to pay other people they promised high returns to and keep some of the money for themselves. As most Ponzi schemes don't have any legitimate earnings, they rely on new people investing their money to satisfy previous investors. When large numbers of investors cash out or the fraudsters struggle to recruit new investors, the schemes typically collapse and thousands of people lose millions of dollars. Everyday people can find themselves duped, but there are ways to spot Ponzi schemes to stop yourself from becoming a victim. If someone offers a guaranteed investment opportunity, that can typically be a red flag. All investments come with risks. And if you notice that your investment provides consistent returns, this isn't always a good sign since most savvy investors know that returns can be inconsistent. You might also uncover paperwork problems, challenges receiving payments, and that the company you're working with isn't registered or licensed. Ponzi schemes might seem rare, but they can be quite common and easy to get sucked into. Number 8. Catfish Scams Catfishing is one of the newest scams we have today with the growing popularity of online dating. Cyber criminals create false identities to scam the victim, steal their identity, or simply harass them. Often, they get personal information from the victim over time and use it to make illegal credit card purchases or even take out loans they don't intend to pay back in the person's name. They might even create fake sob stories to get the victim to give them money out of the kindness of their heart. Interestingly, catfishing, in which you impersonate another person online, is not illegal, but engaging in unlawful activity as that fake person is. The only way to seek justice as the victim is by finding out who the person actually is and contacting the authorities to tell them about the illegal acts they've committed. Fortunately, there are plenty of ways to tell you're being catfished, so you can try and keep yourself safe. Some red flags include only ever communicating via online messenger and never being able to talk on the phone or by video call. They might also have very few friends or followers on social media, or they won't answer specific questions about their hometown or job. Their stories might also not make much sense. You might also notice that they only have headshot photos, very few photos in general, and they are unwilling to meet in real life. They might also shower you with love and attention and then finally ask you for money. Number 7. Charity Scams most of us would happily donate to charities if we could afford to do so and know the money will be used for a good cause. The problem is, fraudsters know many of us have good hearts and will set up fake charity donation opportunities and pocket all the money themselves. Some common ones are charity scams after a tragedy. There might have been a natural disaster or similar tragic event and scammers go door to door asking for money to help those in need. In reality, they're lining their own pockets. Or they'll create crowdfunding campaigns on behalf of someone who's experienced a tragic life event and needs financial help. The campaigns can look legitimate, but haven't been authorized by those involved, and the money goes into the bank account of the scammer. Holiday scams and firefighter, police, and military scams are also quite common. People go door to door or accost people in the streets asking for cash donations to these worthy causes. It can be hard to say no to people asking for donations, but knowing where your money's actually going is essential. Perform thorough research before donating, ask about charity registration and document your donations. Number 6. Identity Theft Identity theft is perhaps one of the most life-changing fraud types there is, and it can take years to come back from such theft as a victim. It involves a criminal obtaining your personal or financial information to commit fraud, like unauthorized purchases or transactions. Once these crimes have been committed, victims typically have a damaged reputation, financial situation, and credit score. Many identity thieves use advanced computer technology to obtain information like social security numbers, credit card information, and bank account numbers to carry out their crimes. In financial identity theft, they use your identity to obtain benefits, goods, services, and credit. With your social security number, they can also apply for loans, 
credit cards, and benefits like medical and disability. In the United States, medical identity theft to obtain free health care is also quite common, as is criminal identity theft when someone poses as another person when they're being arrested to hide evidence of a warrant issued under their real name. If someone else has your social security number, they might also use your personal information to file a fake tax return and collect a refund. There are many different ways criminals can benefit from your personal information, and it can have devastating and even life-changing consequences for victims. Number 5. Government Grant Scams Government grants themselves aren't scams. Instead, they are money given to businesses and individuals to give them a helping hand with their business ventures. This money doesn't have to be paid back, but eligibility criteria are strict, and not everyone that requests a grant will be given one. But free money is free money, and scammers are quick to jump on the idea of profiting from government grants. They act like government officials and contact people, telling them they are eligible to receive a government grant. Instead, they are trying to get your private information, like social security numbers, numbers and bank account numbers to profit from your naivety. Sometimes grant scams can be pretty authentic looking. You might receive an email or phone call about obtaining a government grant for a small fee or a notification saying you've been awarded an $8,000 grant from the Federal Bureau of Grant Awards. Unless you actively seek out a grant through the official grants.gov channel, you will never be contacted about grants, especially ones requiring application fees. The government doesn't reach out to people out of the blue about grants, and they will never call, text, or send social media messages asking for social security information, bank account numbers, or credit card numbers. Number 4. Wanna Cry Downloading new software and operating system updates is annoying. They take up a lot of your time and can put your computer out of action for quite a long time. But they are necessary if you want to avoid harmful cyber attacks like WannaCry, also known as WannaCrypt. This ransomware attack locks people out of their computers until they pay a ransom. The only way to protect your computer is by obtaining a patch from Microsoft and downloading security updates as soon as they are made available. As soon as the ransomware was unleashed in 2017, it attacked attacked over 75,000 computers in 99 countries with file encryption software. Users who wanted their data back had to pay a ransom in Bitcoin, which is a non-traceable cryptocurrency. The creator of WannaCry took advantage of a security hole in Windows Server software, which Windows had created a patch to fix. However, most of the organizations affected by the ransomware hadn't installed the update. By the time the ransomware had run its course, it had affected over 200,000 computers in over 160 countries with damages totaling millions or even billions of dollars. Number 3. Lottery and Sweepstakes Scams Many of us dream about winning the lottery or a big prize worth hundreds of thousands of dollars or even millions. So when the opportunity lands in your lap, of course, you're going to do everything in your power to be the lucky winner. And that's how scammers get you. They contact you over the phone, by social media, or via email to let you know you've won a big contest. All you have to do is pay customs duties, taxes, or a fee to claim your prize. They might even ask for your bank information or tell you to send the tax or duty money money by wire transfer or with gift cards you purchase. While some scammers are happy with the small amount of money they gain from supposed fees and disappear right away, others play the long game. They might invent new fees and say, oh, you're so close to getting the final prize, you just need to pay this one final expense. Jamaica is the country of origin for many lottery cons, so if you receive a random phone call from a stranger with a Jamaican area code of 876, this can typically be a good sign that someone's about to try and scam you. Fortunately, avoiding such scams is easy. Naturally, you can't win a lottery prize if you don't play a lottery game, so this is the first red flag. You'll also never be asked to pay money up front to claim a prize from a reputable lottery company. Number 2. IRS Scams most people can identify an IRS scam when someone tries to make them a victim, but these scams are still quite common and people fall for them. They involve criminals impersonating IRS agents, government employees, and debt collectors by mail, online, or over the phone. Often, these criminals tell you that you owe money for fees, taxes, and penalties, but in reality, you don't. Among the most common scams is being told that your tax refund has been recalculated, but you have to fill out an online form. Once you click the link, you fill out your personal 
personal information like social security numbers. This information is given directly to a scammer. Sometimes scammers will say they are calling from the Federal Depository Insurance Corporation and request your bank information. Or they pose as IRS agents and say your identity has been stolen and you have to buy gift cards to fix it. There are many common IRS scams, but they can be reasonably easy to spot. First of all, the IRS will never contact you by phone first. They always initiate contact through the mail. The IRS also doesn't initiate contact via email to ask for personal or financial information, and they don't initiate contact by text or social media either. Also, no government agency is going to ask you to pay for anything in gift cards. Keep that in mind. Number 1. Cryptocurrency Account Fraud Cryptocurrency is a digital currency that only exists digitally. People use it to make quick payments, avoid transaction fees, or for the anonymity that comes with it. You can purchase all different types of cryptocurrency through apps, websites, exchanges, and cryptocurrency ATMs, or mine for it with advanced computer equipment. Not everyone understands how cryptocurrency works, but its high value has made it something many scammers want to get their digital hands on. According to the FTC, crypto scam victims lost $80 million in just six months in 2021. Sometimes, fake cryptocurrency websites will steal your investments after gaining access to your crypto wallet. Other times, people promise huge returns in exchange for your crypto, which never eventuates. Most scammers and ransomware creators also demand payment in cryptocurrency because it provides anonymity. Cryptocurrency itself is legitimate, but you should only ever store, buy, and sell it through legitimate platforms with excellent reputations. Sure, you might financially benefit from fraud, but how are you supposed to enjoy your ill-gotten gains from behind prison bars? Doesn't make much sense. Have you ever encountered a fraudulent situation? What happened? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.